were here when it was legal. There's probably nobody here right on the dial that was actually here when it was legal in the United States. 1937 was when that ended. We're going to bring back the tradition of the United States and that free, legal marijuana. can be a very enriching experience and we need to develop the courage to say that. Now the bad news, we're still arresting 750,000 marijuana smokers a year in this country. There are more marijuana arrests than all violent criminal arrests altogether. There have been more than 20 million Americans arrested on marijuana charges Whoa. since 1965. <laughs> It is time we stopped arresting and started respecting responsible That's marijuana right. smokers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the good news. When we started normal in 1970, Gallup Poll had just done their first survey. Only 12% of the American public favored legalizing marijuana. Well, folks, after 42, 43 years of good, hard work by tens of thousands of people around this country, the majority of the American public now say prohibition is a failure. Let's legalize and regulate marijuana. We have won the hearts and minds of a majority of the American public. And it's important to remember, smokers only comprise about 13 or 14 percent of the public. So for us to win these issues, we have to present a program that is also appealing to the non-smokers. And we are successfully doing that. And the way you do that, I don't care if every American smokes or not. If they don't, there's just more weed for me, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. But what we need to convince them is not to get high, but that prohibition is a failure. And they are now in large numbers coming to that conclusion. So we are truly at a tipping point. 
the good news, we have 18 states, including yours and the District of Columbia, that have now legalized medical use. In yes! We have 15 states, including Rhode Island, was the most recent one, that have stopped arresting marijuana smokers. They've decriminalized hey, yeah. But most importantly, and the most world-changing event of my lifetime, is that last November, you're going to hear from Mason Kavert from Colorado coming up shortly. Yes. We have totally legalized marijuana in Colorado and Washington and yeah. folks, that yeah. is the beginning of the end. Our yeah. love to smoke a joint with every one of you if they, they have the chance. But the real truth is, the importance of this issue is not marijuana. It's only incidentally about marijuana. It's really about personal freedom. Yes. That realm of your life where government may not enter. And with your help, get high, get active, join normal, and let's finally legalize marijuana for all Americans. Thank you! are going around the crowd with these buckets. Please, please donate. What this will do is this makes it possible for next year's hash bash. Please give whatever you can. Our next speaker is a world-renowned geneticist. He fills venues all across the country with his knowledge on cultivation. This is a man who just has to look at you and you feel like you've learned something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Short! Yeah. Oh, DJ! Oh, Ann Arbor. It's yeah. good to be here. Good to see you all. Beautiful crowd, beautiful crowd. A uh, couple quick shout outs. Uh, thank you to Ash Bash for people putting us on. Wonderful event. Um, to the city of Ann Arbor, to the U of M here. Also, I want to give a shout out to Ohm of Medicine, where I will be giving a talk this Wednesday, uh, 7 to 9, I think. And finally, I want to give a shout out to the G3C, if you're familiar with the Genesee County Compassion Club. And Kip, I'm going to see you, man. I'm going to be there uh, Tuesday afternoon, 1 to 4, I believe. But if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's, that model needs to be replicated everywhere. It's the way to go. Yes. So, uh, anyhow, it's good to be here. A uh, little, little piece of trivia. Uh, 40 years ago, 1973, I was here. I was yeah. here on this diet, man. Um, my, my goodness, holy moly. Time flies, I gotta tell you. It really does. And, uh, but, I can honestly say, to borrow a phrase here, what a long, strange trip it's been. Uh, um, now, times are changing, okay? We can feel it, it's coming, and we all need to prepare ourselves for the looming legalization, because it is coming, and we're gonna have other things to be concerned about, all right? Now, it's uh, a long time coming, I know, but I want everyone here to just ask ourselves one question. What do I want? What do I want from this, okay? Because visualization is the first step towards actualizing our dreams, right? Right? So, I have a request in that regard, please. And I know I'm speaking to the choir here, so bear with me. And you all can run with this as well. But I want to ask everybody, please, please, don't be greedy. That is going to be our biggest enemy up and coming. And there's no need. There is no need in this industry. Let me shoot some numbers at you here real quick. Just, just so you know the score. One acre of decent farmland with good soil, good drainage, plenty of sunlight, and irrigated can produce upwards of one million grams of resonated plant material. Yes. Now you notice I said resonated plant material and not bud, because the future is uh, not going to be measured in grams of bud, but in milligrams of cannabinoid, all right? So, 
one acre, one million grams of resonated plant material. Keep the mass simple. Let's say it's 10%. That's 100,000 grams of concentrate, all right? Two people, two able-bodied people can maintain this system or a consortium of part-time people. This is the reason this plant is illegal, because the people who want to control things can't control this plant, but we can, all right? Yes, we can. Now, what we have an opportunity to do coming up in the future, our industry is about to be born, all right? We can occupy this industry from the get-go. We have any Occupy supporters here? Yes! Yes, good people. Well, let's do that with our industry from the get-go. One acre, one million grams. All right? That's our future. That's it. You know, the working middle class was born here in Michigan. And it's floundering throughout the country. We have a solution. And not only can we revitalize the working middle class in America, we're not going to be producing things that kill us. We're going to be producing medicine. People ask me, people ask me, how did you come up with the blueberry? Oh, how did you do that? In my book, I said it's to satisfy my own head. But really, what it's all about is the healing. The blueberry was the one that helped me heal. That's what this plant is all about, all right. is the healing. Yes. And that's it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great yeah. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, DJ Short. Coming up next, we have our featured speaker. First of all, how you doing? Good. marijuana for recreational use and regulated in the state of Colorado, and he's a Marijuana Policy Project Communications Director. Please give it up for Mason Tiefer. Yeah. It's great to be here, guys. Thanks so much. It's great to come out here and, and feels uh, familiar. It also smells a little like Colorado out here. So. Yeah. For making me feel at home. Um, and also, you know, with that smell, it also smells a little bit like freedom. So, for the last, you know, the better half of a century right now, our government, our law enforcement officials, uh, you know, prohibitionists have been playing a game here in our country. They've been playing a game to keep marijuana illegal. They've changed the rules on us. They've cheated. They've gone out of their way to make, to rig this game and make this game as hard as possible for us to win. But at this point, we're coming back. So it, we hear a whole lot of things from these people. What they've done to keep themselves ahead in this game is they've told a lot of lies about marijuana and you've probably heard a lot of them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention a few of them. You know, I think that what happens is, I think everyone here knows, we need to call them out on their bullshit, right? Yes. Yeah. So I need, you know, it's not just one person that can call them out on their bullshit. You know, I can't just do it. Any of the speakers up here, any of the organizations, the coalition of these organizations, it's gonna take all of you guys too, right? Yeah. So if you wanna call them out on their bullshit, I need all you guys to also call them out on their bullshit. So when I say, our government used to say, that using marijuana would make you kill people. What's that? Bullshit. Oh, bullshit. When our government says that using marijuana will make you an addict and steer you toward using heroin, what's that? Bullshit. bullshit. When our government says that we cannot allow adults to use marijuana because they will become 
losers and they will not make anything of their lives. What's that? Bullshit. Yeah. Absolutely. So when I moved to Colorado back in 2005, I started an organization called SAFER, and the, mis the mission of that organization is simply to educate the public about one very simple fact, that marijuana is without a doubt, undeniably, cannot be argued, hands down, safer than alcohol. Yes. Yeah. And there is absolutely no rational, logical reason why we should be punishing adults who are simply making the safer choice. Yeah. That's a message that we've been spreading in Colorado for the last eight years, and we have changed the way the public thinks about marijuana. We haven't just talked about the harms of prohibition, we haven't just talked about the tax revenue we could be raising from, from marijuana sales, we've been talking about the fact that marijuana is less harmful for, than alcohol, and adults should have the right to use it responsibly. Yeah. As a result of, of pushing that message and building support, getting more people joining us, organizations, the initiative in Colorado, one of the most amazing parts about it is that it was not run by any one person or one, any one organization. It was everyone coming together. It was the Marijuana Policy Project and Safer and Normal. It was Students for Sensible Drug Policy and Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, the ACLU, the NAACP, the UFCW, the Latino Coalition. It was a lot of people. And it was also people like everyone out here that got involved, whether it was volunteering, giving money, or simply talking to their friends and family. Because that's what it's gonna take if we wanna change these laws. It's gonna take talking to people. When's the last time someone handed you a flyer and you're like, oh, I'm gonna change the way I think about that now. That's not how it works. But when's the last time you had a serious conversation with your friend or your family member or your employer or your colleague your brother-in-law, whoever it might be, and, and you had a real conversation and they understood what you were talking about, that's when we change minds, and that's what it takes. It takes talking to people. So I encourage everyone here to go out there and make sure that you are talking to people. We are on the verge here. We can win this game. Keith mentioned the latest poll that came out. I saw a sign over here, 52% of Americans now support making marijuana legal. 18 medical marijuana states will have a few more in the next year or so. Two states where it's legal. 52%. This is not just a tipping point. This is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> marijuana prohibition laws are crashing down and we need to finish this game strong. But you know what? We cannot win if you don't play. It's like the lottery. You can't win if you don't play the game. And that's what it's going to take is everyone out here getting involved, whether it's joining any of these number of organizations, Michigan Normal, uh, M uh, NPRA, uh, you know, any of these groups, whether it's just being out there, getting involved in the community, talking to your friends and family, any way you can. Because that's what it's going to take is everyone joining together and making their voices heard as one. And you know what? It can be done. We, we proved that in Colorado. In 2006, we ran a statewide initiative. It got 41%. People said, oh, 41%. Well, clearly Colorado doesn't want this. And for six years, we worked our asses off and we spread a message that's resonated and people change. And that can't happen. If it can happen in Colorado, it can happen in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best thing. The best thing that came out of Colorado, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely wonderful to be able to have marijuana legal, to not worry about being arrested and prosecuted just for possessing a, a small amount of marijuana. That's wonderful. But the best thing that happened is that it got people talking, it got elect elected officials thinking, it is now forcing people to rethink these laws around the country, including here in Michigan, and I hope to see this state become one of the next ones to make marijuana legal. Yes! But it's going to take you. It's going to take you going out and talking to people. And you know what? They're going to argue. They're going to say, you know, yeah, we still need to arrest marijuana users. We, we can't just allow it. What is that? That's bullshit, right? Come on. Let me hear you say that. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And they're going to go out there and they're going to say, oh, we don't care if you are suffering from AIDS or multiple sclerosis or cancer or glaucoma. We don't think you should be allowed to use marijuana. What are you going to say? Yeah. And they're going to say, well, fine, you can use a little 
little bit of marijuana, but we're not going to let you set up a safe medical marijuana dispensary where they can access it consistently and safely. And what are you going to say? Bullshit! Bullshit! And then they're going to come to you and they're going to say, Michigan can't legalize marijuana. And what are you going to say? Bullshit! And when you talk to a friend and you say, hey, I'm going to get involved and try to help make that happen, how about you? And they say, you know what? I don't want to do it. What are you going to say? Bullshit! Oh, fucking bullshit. So take this spirit, take it with you, talk about this issue, get people you know involved, and together we can make marijuana legal in Michigan too. Again, thank you, Hashbash. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the speakers. Uh, after this, Everyone's going to move to Monroe Street. That's where all the festivities actually take place. You'll be a little bit more free to vibe. Uh, before then, though, I'd like to introduce one of my favorite local musicians. I go to see him whenever I can. He's the headiest of headies, the gnarliest of the gnarled. Without further introduction, Lance Alsani. Thank you all. So this song was written by John Lennon and played at Chrysler Arena in 1971. And this is for John Sinclair.